Hey, it's Top Tip Tuesday from Insidium. I'm Bob Wormsley, and on today's video, we're going to be looking at NX Turbulence. Now, this is different to X Particles Turbulence. It's an all new modifier with some different, more advanced controls, and it gives you loads of options in creating some really nice custom turbulent movement in particles. So, let's jump into Cinema 4D and we'll get started. Here's our scene then, and we actually have two emitters here to demonstrate two different things. The first one has particles which have a very short life. Uh, they're being coloured by their direction, and that gives us a nice 2D representation of the noise that's driving the NX turbulence. And then we have this nice thin emitter, and this is giving us the full kind of 3D animation of how that noise is affecting our particles. So let's have a look at our NX turbulence, and we are going to have a look at the noise type by default is set to simplex, but we're going to change this and have a look at this new noise type, Voronoise. And if we select that, you can see, look, we're getting a very obvious Voronoise style noise pattern here. And that's giving us, if in our 3D particles, these really cool, big, kind of swirly um, curls. Now, if we wanted to have a finer noise with more detail, we could maybe just scale down the noise let's try that we'll scale it down and now look on our 2d you can see that we've really um made that much much more fine and the 3d result of that is this really nice kind of it almost looks like flames doesn't it so that's looking pretty cool but we've lost those really large swirls that I thought were looking pretty good. So what if we wanted to have both? We wanted to have that big swirly animation, but we wanted to have some fine detail in there as well. Well, with the new settings in NX Turbulence over the X Particles Turbulence, we're able to do that. So what we're going to do is this. First of all, let's put our scale back up to 100. And um, first of all, we're gonna have a look at octaves. So by default, we have one octave. If I put this up to say 10 and you have a look at our 2D you can see it's become very kind of small scale noisy again and we have got again that really nice kind of flame look but we've lost those big swirls and that's because by default this setting called persistence is set to a hundred percent and that is saying that the strength persists through all of these octaves equally but what we want to do is have full strength on the first octave, the really big swirly ones, and then we want that strength to gradually reduce as it goes up the octaves. So to do that, we just reduce the persistence, which means that there's less, less strength on all subsequent octaves. And if we do that, look, we're starting to get our large swirls back, but we're maintaining some of that fine detail. Not much of the fine detail. Let's increase that persistence. We need this strength to persist through those octaves a bit more for more of that fine detail. Yep, so that's looking nice. We've got big swirls and we've got more detail. Excellent. So that is persistence. But we can also control how our noise is animating and how it animates through the octaves. And we're going to do that with our lacunarity control. So let's just, to demonstrate, put our octaves back down to just one. So now we've just got this one octave and we're getting our big swirls. And in our 2D noise, you can see that that noise is animating. And that's because we have our frequency set to 100%. If we put the frequency on zero, there is no animation in that noise whatsoever. Put it back up to 100 and then we get that animation back, which brings us our swirls. Now, let's put our lacunarity on zero. And if we then put our octaves back up to 10, the only octave that is now animating via this frequency is the first one, the big swirls. And we can see that in our 2D. We can see that the big parts of that Voronoise are still animating with the frequency, but we've got loads of static octaves which aren't animating. 
But if we start increasing the lacunarity, we will begin to add frequency to the subsequent octaves as well. So let's add a bit of lacunarity, put it up to maybe 2.3. And yeah, look, you can see a much, much more noisy, uh, uh, much more kind of frenetic animation as all of those uh, frequencies are now animating. We could perhaps have slightly less on the subsequent octaves to maintain those large curl animations. And there you go. So we've managed to, using the persistence and lacunarity, we have um, affected how the strength and the frequency persists through those octaves to be able to get this custom noise look, which maintains the large swirls of the uh, lower octaves, but then gives us that nice added fine detail of the higher octaves.